place me once more, my daughter, where the sun day may shine upon my old and time-worn head, for the last time, perchance. My race is run, and soon amidst the amber-silent dead I must repose, it may be, half forgot. Yes. I have broke the heart and bitter bread for many a year, and with those who trembled not to buckle on their armor for the fight, and set themselves against the tyrant's lot, and I have never bowed me to his might, nor knelt before him, for I bear within my heart the saint earnest consciousness of right, and that perpetual hate of gilded sin which made me what I am, and though the stain of poverty be on me, yet I win more honor by it, than the blinded train who hug their willing servitude, and bow unto the weakest and the most profane. Therefore, with unencumbered soul I go before the footstool of my Maker, where I hope to stand as undebased as now. Child! Is the sun abroad? I feel my hair borne up and wafted by the gentle wind, I feel the odors that perfume the air, and hear the rustling of the leaves behind. Within my heart I picture them, and then I almost can forget that I am blind, and old, and hated by my fellow men. Yet would I fain once more behold the grace of nature ere I die, and gaze again upon her living and rejoicing face, fain would I see thy countenance my child, my comforter. I feel thy dear embrace, I hear thy voice, so musical and mild, the patient soul interpreter, by whom so many years of sadness are beguiled, for it hath made my small and scanty room peopled with glowing visions of the past. But I will calmly bend me to my doom, and wait the hour which is approaching fast, when triple light shall stream upon mine eyes, and heaven itself be opened up at last to him who dared foretell its mysteries. I have had visions in this drear eclipse of outward consciousness, and claw on the skies, striving to utter with my earthly lips what the diviner soul had half divined, even as the saint in his apocalypse who saw the inmost glory, where enshrined sat he who fashioned glory. This hath driven all outward strife and tumult from my mind, and humbled me, until I have forgiven my bitter enemies, and only seek to find the straight and narrow path to heaven. Yet I am weak, oh, how entirely weak, for one who may not love nor suffer more. Sometimes unbidden tears will wet my cheek, and my heart bound as keenly as of yore. Responsive to a voice, now hushed to rest, which made the beautiful Italian shore, in all its pomp of summer vineyards dressed, and even in a paradise to me. Do the sweet breezes from the balmy west still murmur through thy groves, Parthenope, in search of odors from the orange bowers? Still, on thy slopes of verdure, does the bee cull her rare honey from the virgin flowers? And feel o mel her plaintive chaunt prolong neath skies more calm and more serene than ours? making the summer one perpetual song? Art thou the same as when in manhood's pride I walked and joy thy grassy meads among, with that fair youthful vision by my side, in whose bright eyes I looked, and not in vain? O oh my adored dear angel! O oh my bride! Despite of years, and woe, and want, and pain, my soul yearns back towards thee, and I seem to wander with thee, hand in hand, again, by the bright margins of that flowing stream. I hear again thy voice, more silver sweet than fancied music floating in a dream, possess my being, from afar I greet the waving of thy garments in the glade, and the light rustling of thy fairy feet, what time is one half eager, half afraid, love's burning secret faltered on my tongue, and tremulous looks and broken words betrayed the secret of the heart from whence they sprung. Ah me, the earth that rendered thee to heaven gave up an angel beautiful and young, spotless and pure as snow when freshly driven, a brighter aura for the starry sphere where all is love, and even life forgiven. Bright of the mortal beauty, ever dear. Dost thou await me in thy blessed abode? While I, doth onus like, must linger here, and count each step along the rugged road, a phantom, tottering to a long made grave, and eager to lay down my weary load. I who was fancy's lord, am fancy's slave. Like the low murmurs of the Indian shell tine from its coral bed beneath the wave, which, unforgetful of the ocean's swell, retains within its mystic urn the hum heard in the sea grots where nereids dwell. Old thoughts still haunt me, unawares they come between me and my rest, nor can I make those aged visitors of sorrow dumb. Oh, yet a while, my feeble soul, awake, nor wander back with sullen steps again, for neither pleasant pastime canst thou take in such a journey, nor endure the pain. The phantoms of the past are dead for thee, so let them ever uninvoked remain, and be thou calm, till death shall set thee free. Thy flowers of hope expanded long ago, long since their blossoms withered on the tree. No second spring can come to make them blow, but in the silent winter of the grave they lie with blighted love and buried woe. I did not waste the gifts which nature gave, nor slothful lay in the Sertian bower, nor did I yield myself the willing slave of lust for pride, for riches, or for power. No. In my heart a nobler spirit dwelt, for constant was my faith in manhood's dower, man, made in God's own image, and I felt how of our own accord we courted shame, 
until to idols like ourselves we knelt, and so renounced the great and glorious claim of freedom, our immortal heritage. I saw how bigotry, with spiteful aim, smote at the searching eyesight of the sage, how error stole behind the steps of truth, and cast illusion on the sacred page. So, as a champion, even in early youth I waged by battle with a purpose keen, nor feared the hand of terror, nor the tooth of serpent jealousy. And I have been with starry Galileo in his cell, that wise magician with the brow serene, who fathomed space, and I have seen him tell the wonders of the planetary sphere, and trace the ramparts of heaven's citadel on the cold flagstones of his dungeon drear. And I have walked with Hampton and with Vane, names once so gracious to an English ear, in days that never may return again. My voice, though not the loudest, hath been heard whenever freedom raised her cry of pain, and the faint effort of the humble bard hath roused up thousands from their lethargy, to speak in words of thunder. What reward was mine, or theirs? It matters not, for I am but a leaf cast on the whirling tide, without a hope or wish, except to die. But truth, asserted once, must still abide, unquenchable, as are those fiery springs which day and night gush from the mountainside, perpetual meteors girt with lambent wings which the wild tempest tosses to and fro, but cannot conquer with the force it brings. Yet I, who ever felt another's woe more keenly than my own untold distress, I, who have battled with the common foe, and broke for years the bread of bitterness, who never yet abandoned or betrayed the trust vouchsafed me, nor have ceased to bless, am left alone to wither in the shade, a weak old man, deserted by his kind, whom none will comfort in his age, nor aid. Oh, let me not repine. A quiet mind conscious and upright, needs no other stay, nor can I grieve for what I leave behind, in the rich promise of eternal day. Henceforth to me the world is dead and gone, its thorns unfelt, its roses cast away, and the old pilgrim, weary and alone, bowed down with travel, at his master's gate now sits, his task of lifelong labor done, thankful for rest, although it comes so late, after sore journey through the world of sin, in hope, and prayer, and wistfulness to wait, until the door shall ope, and let him in.